are okay. This is my uh, final lab video, I think, for so where I'm going to cover sort of really basic genetics. This is chat, uh, section 28 in your lab book over uh, heredity. So I'm going to try to give you a kind of a walkthrough from the beginning. I'm not going to get it all, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, let's look inside of a cell and see what we got. So here's a cell. Uh, there would be a nucleus. Inside the nucleus, you're going to find all the DNA, right? And we usually write them as sort of chromosomes like this. Now, as we know, that's not how they normally exist. Normally, they're single, um, uh, one of these legs only, like a single unreplicated chromosome. But in any case, a chromosome uh, would be made up of DNA like this. So here's a DNA, double helix, and it's going across and, by, and uh, matching up with the opposite side, the, the other strand would be these nucleotides. So I'm just going to throw in some, some A's and T's and C's and G's in here and uh, whatever. This would continue, right? And you, this is your, your DNA. This is your nucleotide sequence. And DNA is broken up into these chunks that are uh, called genes. A gene is basically a sequence of DNA nucleotides that codes for a particular protein. So when you say it's in your genes, what you're saying is that you're, you have a sequence of nucleotides that makes a protein that ends up being a, a demonstrable, like a, a, an expressible or an expressed trait. So for instance, my eyes are blue. Everybody has eye color, right? So everybody has genes for eye color, but not everybody has blue eyes. Some people have brown eyes, some people have green eyes. So we have different versions of those genes. We all have got the same genes for eye color, we all have the same genes for skin color. We all have the same genes for all of our traits, but we have, in lots of cases, different versions of those traits. This is why people uh, look different from one another. So let's go and look at a chunk of this DNA. If I was gonna try to isolate a chunk of this DNA, I might pick this one right here, and I'm not gonna write in all the letters, but this would represent a very simplified version of a gene. Now, if this were a, T, C, G, let's just repeat here just so that I can, uh, whatever, and down on. So if it was just A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G, that would be one version of this gene. Now, that may be, this may be one of my genes for eye color, which contributes to, to my particular eye color. But another person may have the same gene, so the same place on the chromosome, the same basic sequence of nucleotides, but there may be a change. So instead of this being a G, this might be uh, an A. So it might go A, T, C, A, right? And then everything else is the same. But even that one single difference could make a, uh, a significant difference in how that gene is expressed, how the, uh, the trait appears on that organism. So these two both would represent the same gene, but they represent different alleles, different versions. So, and so alleles, L-E-L-E-S, these are, uh, you know, versions of a gene. Uh, and like I said, they vary. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna kind of walk us through um, basic genetics and how you can, uh, you can trace uh, the, the inheritance of these different alleles from uh, parent to offspring to offspring to offspring. First of all, let's get some terminology out of the way. Uh, the, we'll say, so dominant versus recessive. Dominant, it refers to uh, the, the state, the, how, how well expressed an allele is. So a dominant allele is one that can mask or hide the effects of another allele. So if, if you have a dominant allele, you'll oftentimes write that as a capital letter. So I'm going to write a dominant allele represented by a capital letter A. Uh, recessive alleles are those that can be masked. So if a recessive allele is present all by itself, if you've got two chromosomes, both of which have the recessive allele, you can express, you'll show that, that recessive allele, that trait will be expressed. Um, but if you have a dominant allele on one chromosome and a recessive allele on the other chromosome, you're gonna only express the dominant one because the dominant one can will mask the recessive one. So the recessive one, recessive alleles can be masked and they're usually represented with this lowercase letter. Now these letters represent uh, the state, that the, the allele uh, of that particular gene. So if I was gonna draw a pair of chromosomes right here, 
I'm drawing unreplicated ones. One chromosome might be uh, uh, might possess the, the dominant allele, whereas the other one could possess the recessive allele. Or in another individual, right? So this is individual one. In another individual, it could be, you know, both dominant. In another individual, it could be both recessive. So these three different uh, states right here, you could have what, what you represent as big A, big A, big A, little A, or little A, little A, uh, have terms that describe them. These generally are called the genotype. So all three of these are called genotypes. And genotype simply means the actual combination of alleles. So big A, big A, little, big A, little A, et cetera, those are all genotypes. They're different genotypes, but they are all genotypes. Uh, this one right here, this particular genotype, is called homozygous dominant. This one is called homozygous recessive. And this one in the middle is called heterozygous. So you don't say heterozygous dominant or heterozygous recessive, it's just heterozygous, two different ones, right? Homozygous means the same alleles. Dominant means they're both dominant. Recessive means they're both uh, recessive. Now, how these genes are expressed is that whole process of protein synthesis. If you remember uh, from a distant time in the past, you were taught uh, that you have DNA in the nucleus. It undergoes transcription where you make RNA, and then that RNA goes to ribosomes where it is translated into protein. So these the genetic information is translated ultimately into a protein which can vary based on which genotype you have. Uh, let's use an example of, uh, of humans. Let's see, what should we look at? Let's look at, uh, let's look at albinism. So there's a, a, a trait that you can have called uh, albinism. And albinism is where you don't produce any melanin. All right? So, I produce melanin in some small amounts, but I produce melanin. Uh, people vary in the amount of melanin that they produce. But if I had uh, albinism, if I had that genetic trait called albinism, I would not produce melanin. My skin would be really uh, chalk white and uh, my hair would be white. I don't have any this pigment to, to lay down on my skin. Albinism happens to be a, uh, a recessive trait, a, a recessive, due to a recessive allele. So I'm gonna, I, gonna identify these guys. I'll use these alleles still. So big A, I'm gonna represent with, I'll say normal uh, melanin production. And little a uh, is albinism. So the genotypes here that I've written down here, if you can still see them, the genotypes down here still are homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, and heterozygous. But now you can uh, determine because I'm applying these letters to the trait albinism, you can determine the phenotype of the individual. These, as I mentioned earlier, I'll write it. These are genotypes, which is the actual combination of, of alleles. And then the phenotype over here, you can think of as the trait. So big a, a big A, big A person, they've got two dominant alleles. As you see up here, the, the dominant allele represents the production of normal melanin. So if somebody was big A, big A, their phenotype would be, you know, has melanin, however you want to describe that. I don't think that's the most eloquent way to say it, but it ha you'd have melanin. Now, what if you're big A, little a? So you've got a dominant allele and a recessive allele. If you remember, I said that dominant allele can mask a recessive, another allele, in this case, a recessive allele and a recessive allele can be masked. So if a person is big A, little a, if that's their genotype, the dominant allele masks or hides the recessive allele. So big A, big, big a little a in this case, this heterozygous state uh, is the same. Has melanin. The only way you can express albinism is if you've got both of the recessive alleles. If your genotype is little a, little a, then there's no dominant allele to mask them. Therefore, the recessive allele is expressed, and the phenotype of that individual would be uh, albino. They have, they have no ability to produce melanin. Now, 
let's look at some uh, some genetic crosses. Let's see how we can how we can trace the paths that these alleles take from parent to offspring. And this is going to require just a little refresher on meiosis. So if you remember when we when the previous lecture when I talked about meiosis, you had prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, a uh, one and two. And in uh, meiosis one, you went from say having uh, this, and this I'm only drawing four chromosomes. You're having four chromosomes to ultimately just having these guys split and go to opposite sides. So now we're going to have two cells with only two chromosomes. So we go from the diploid to the haploid state. Now, without getting into too much detail, if I was going to put the genes for albinism on these chromosomes, I would do something like this, where you have uh, a big A, and it's actually on both legs, which is the confusing part. Big A, big A, little a, little a. So this individual right here has the genotype of big A, little a. When this cell undergoes meiosis, you're going to either get the chromosome with the big A, and you remember there's another phase of meiosis where you break it down so that you end up with this, right? So you still only get one copy of that. You'd get either the chromosome with the big A, or because they separate, that's what happens when you go through meiosis one, because one chromosome is going to go to one cell, the other chromosome is going to go to another cell. When they separate, you're going to get, you can either create, let's say if this was a sperm cell, you're either going to get a sperm cell with the big A, or you're going to produce, you not or, that one did kind of turn out to be a blockhead sperm cell. Um, but you're going to produce multiple sperm cells, some with the big A and some with the little a, right? Half and half. So an individual that has the genotype big A, little a is going to produce half gametes that have the big A and half gametes that have the little a. So half of the gametes are going to contain the uh, dominant allele for normal pigmentation of your skin. The other half are going to contain the little a, which uh, codes for uh, albinism. So let's look at a prospective uh, reproductive event. We're not going to get a picture of the board at the end of this one because it's a work in progress. But you do have a pause button. So go back a little bit, pause, and take a screenshot. Uh, all right. That's a good idea. Uh, so let's look at an individual here uh, that has that heterozygous trait. We're going to be dealing with albinism here. We've already established that one. So here's an individual that is heterozygous for the, uh, for the gene for the allele for albinism. And then let's say this, they're going to mate with an individual that is also, let's, let's just say that two people are, uh, they're going to have kids and they both happen to have this uh, allele for albinism. They're called carriers. Uh, if you express the, the dominant allele, but you have in your genes the recessive allele. So these are both carriers for this trait albinism. The way you do it is basically say, well, this is this big A is represented on one chromosome, the little a is on another one, right? And same thing over here, here's my chromosomes, big A and little a. Now when these individuals, it doesn't really matter who goes where, uh, male on the left in this case, doesn't, female on the right, doesn't, the, the sex doesn't matter here, except that you're producing kids with it. <clears throat> so when these individuals undergo meiosis, they're gonna produce a sperm cell with a big A or a sperm cell with a little a. And this individual, this female, can produce, she only lets, you know, produces one oocyte every 28 days, but that thing has a 50% chance of being a big A oocyte or being a little a oocyte. So we can represent them both here at the same time. So you're either going to produce a big A or a little a gamete. Now, this sperm, this big A sperm cell might fertilize a big A uh, oocyte, or it could as luck would have it, fertilize a little a oocyte. Also, the little a sperm could meet up with the big A oocyte, or the little a sperm could meet up with the little a oocyte. And the way you do that is you kind of just draw, like I'm going to just draw some lines. So that one could fertilize this one, or it could fertilize that one. This one could fertilize this one, or it could fertilize that one. And the way you can uh, demonstrate this uh, visually is to make what's called a a Punnett square. And this is after a, a researcher 
in Cambridge University back in the 1900s. I don't remember when it was. Uh, 1920s? But anyway, so his name was R.C. Punnett, and he had a lab of, of uh, grad students, and they, they worked out that you could just do this simple little graphical tool here to, uh, to figure out what type of genotypes and thus phenotypes you get from any given uh, cross. So I'll put the possible genes, possible gametes of one of the uh, partners here on the top and the other one on this left uh, column. So the female can produce a big A or a little a. The male can produce a big A or a little a. And then all you do is just fill in the boxes, right? So big A, big A, big A, little a, big A, little a, little a, little a. You might say, why did I put the big A first? instead of little a, big a, you know, because it doesn't matter, first of all. They, this, this, and this are the same thing. But it looks more confusing than if you just put them the same way, right? So I'm gonna just keep them big letters first. So what this means is that in any given reproductive event between these two individuals, they can produce this child or this type of child or this type of child. And these boxes represent the likelihood of each of those genotypes being, uh, being produced. So there's a four, four total boxes. You don't have four kids at a time, but you do. I'm off camera for a sec. Just keep rolling. Got the schnipples. This is, makes for really riveting, uh, riveting cinematography. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, you've got one out of four chance of producing a big A, big A person, right? So you have a quarter chance of producing uh, a big A, big A. You've got two out of four, or half a chance, I'll, put, I'll, I'll write two out of four, are big A, little A, and one out of four chance of producing a little A, little A. So <clears throat> you could call this ratio one to two to one, or you could say, there's a 25% chance of producing a big A, big A offspring, a 50% chance of producing a big A, little A offspring, and a 25% chance of producing a little A, little A offspring. So in this mating between these two heterozygous individuals, we have a genotypic ratio. So the, the actual genotypes, right? The actual combination. A genotypic ratio of one to two to one. And you'd have to tell me what they are. You'd have to say one big A, big A, to two big A, little A's, to one little A, little A, right? But we also want to know what the phenotypic, the expected, I should say, phenotypic ratio of those offspring uh, is as well. So the phenotypic ratio is how those genotypes are expressed. This individual obviously is going to have normal melanin. These two individuals, these two heterozygous individuals, have the dominant allele present, so it masks the recessive allele. So both of these individuals also show normal uh, skin uh, pigmentation. This fourth individual right here is the only one that will exhibit uh, albinism. So if I was gonna talk about a phenotypic ratio, is this on, on screen? So the phenotypic ratio is three to one, you know, a normal pigmentation to albinism, or you could say 75% normal pigmentation, 25% uh, albinism. There's, in your, in your book, uh, you'll see that there's several terms that were already covered, right? So I'm not gonna go into them again, but synapsis, crossing over, uh, were, were discussed. Haploid and diploid were discussed. Uh, all I'm going to give you guys today is th this, basically. So I'm just going to give you this basic, what they call basic Mendelian uh, inheritance. So it's dealing with the first, you've got 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs, right? So you've got pair one, pair two, pair three, yada, 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 until you get down to the last pair, which are called your sex chromosomes, and they either just, they commonly describe these as being XY or XX. So you'll either be, have two, what they call X chromosomes, and you'll be a, phenot sorry, a genotypic female, and 
you could also have instead an X and what they call a Y, which in case you'd be a genotypic male. I'm not going to deal with those chromosomes today. We will get it in lecture from me. All I'm going to deal with are these guys. And so these, these last pair, this 23rd pair, are called your sex chromosomes. These first 22 pairs are called autosomes. So autosomal inheritance is it involves traits that are found on these first 22 pairs. This example which I gave you here is called uh, simple dominant recessive inheritance. So there's a lot of variations on this. There's, you can see in your, in your lab in that table, co-dominant and incomplete dominant and sex links, sex linkage and multiple, uh, multiple alleles, right? We only have two alleles here, dominant recessive, but, but there's lots of um, uh, genes that have many, several, you know, three, four, five more alleles per gene. We're not going to get into any of that in lab. I have office hours virtually every Monday through, well, not virtually every Monday. I have virtual office hours every Monday through Thursday from 10 to noon. It, regardless if you're in my class or not, you should have the link. Uh, I, 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 well, maybe you don't, but I'll make sure that you can get the link. I'll distribute it to, to your instructor. If you have any questions about any of this genetic stuff, please get a hold of me somehow uh, or ask your teacher but I'll be glad to answer your questions. In any case, that's, that's all I got for the uh, genetics and uh, stay classy.